I'm going to show you guys um, how to put this uh, mini mating mug from start to finish, how to put everything together and uh, what has worked for me and uh, what hopefully uh, works for you guys as well to make the job easier. Um, so yeah, when you get this uh, small mating mug, you'll have the inner cover. You have this little bag here, so what you'll need to do is this is to separate the queen from the feeder, so it doesn't go in there. Ventilation, there's like a little ledge here, I put that facing in so it can rest in this area. Then you'll have these three little pieces. Each one is a frame. You'll also have this for the outside, but I don't really use this. So I just throw it inside the feeder and just leave it there so I don't lose it. Now, if you look at this carefully, um, on this end, there's this uh, kind of like a Z shape, uh, connection that's the easiest place to where you can take this apart from by just pulling then I just twist now on the inside you'll see these grooves that's where the the uh, foundation goes in I found that it's easier to grab the top bar which also has the ridge at the bottom. I found it easy to just grab it like so. And then just put it at an angle and then twist like so. I found it to be easier this way to grab the top bar, rotate it and do it again, than to grab this one and try to put it together because it bends more so you'll find more leverage getting the top piece putting it in this way and then twisting over like so repeat the same steps split it out trust me it's a lot easier than going like this trying to break them apart Once again, you grab your top bar, put it in at an angle, and then at that point you twist. Then you rotate the top bar, same process again. I put 150 of this uh, mating mix together, so it definitely helps anything that you can do to speed up the process same thing grab it same thing top bar groove goes on the inside Now, you have your three frames all assembled. Based on, uh, I, I did cuts on a medium uh, plastic foundation, and I also did cuts on a uh, regular deep foundation, and I found that it's better to use deep foundation because you get uh, less waste uh, by using a deep foundation, you can get three, uh, three uh, pieces of foundation um, instead of the uh, medium where, where you'll get uh, two. What I do is I just kind of estimate uh, where to cut, or if you want to be more precise, you can put your frame and measure it that way, and then you can. Uh, do the cut that way. I like to cut my uh, frame 
or my foundation just right in between this uh, ridge here. Now what you do is you grab like a box cutter or something like that, make a line and then you just fold and it's just a nap. Same thing, you don't need that much pressure as long as you make your line and then cut. Now using the same uh, blade what I'll do is I'll trim a little bit on one side and I'll show you guys in a little bit why. Same thing on one side. Now on this side I don't because it already has a, a ledge here. Now when I put this in here, it should fit right in the grooves like so, okay? Now, what I like to do is, I like to grab it this way and put my finger there. Kind of holds everything in place. Next thing I like to do is grab a, a glue gun. Okay, make sure it's hot. And then I put just a small dab of glue right at the edges. And that's it. I don't do nothing on, on here or all along the lines. Just tiny dabs on each side of the foundation here. Now, the next thing I do, so my foundation doesn't move, fall off, or uh, it gives enough time for the uh, glue to dry up, I grab a rubber band and I put it like that, and that holds everything together. Um, and then once I'm ready to, to put the frames in, I'll take the rubber bands off. Same thing. For the smaller piece that doesn't have the ledge, I do trim on three sides. And it's only, it's only a little bit. Be careful when you're using sharp objects to not cut yourself. Remember, safety first. That one's done. That one's done. Same thing. Once you guys get the hang of it, it definitely speeds up. These uh, glue guns are very inexpensive. Uh, you can find them at, I think the dollar store and stuff like that. Same thing. Grab a rubber band, put it over, and this even allows you to square the, the frame if you need to from one to the side to the other. What the rubber, do, rubber, rubber band, what the rubber band does, it doesn't allow the, the edges to flare up because there's nothing at the bottom, so there's not support there. So you're using the rubber band as a support until the, the glue dries up. That's it. Now, what I've also done is um, to try to avoid drowning or help the bees and not getting a lot of drowning, I grabbed some of this uh, galvanized uh, wire meshing. I fold it, but I don't completely bend it. And then at the edges, I kind of open them up a bit. What that does, it, it helps to press on the walls of the feeder. And it should look something like that all the way down. Now, when you're putting your frames together, by this time the uh, glue has dried up. They're pretty sturdy. 
Now, you gotta pay attention to this uh, edges here because once you put your frame inside, you want the middle to give you a perfect hole. Like so. The reason for this is because your inner cover is gonna sit on top of that. And that's where you will be putting in your quint cell. I put one side first to make it easier to close, and that's it. Now, the last step I do once I transport the bees and open it up is I'll grab a pinch cushion and put it here to prevent the uh, the gate or the legal door from going up and down as uh, more wear and tear causes it to open by itself or close. And that's it.